I now have a job. So that's what I used to have. So yeah. Ancient and now is my wife's. Uh, <laughs> I'm using the word computer. Do you have the bill of 6500? No, I think I've got uh, almost that. My, what is that thing? my old work laptop right, was a Dell 6500 and it weighed yeah. 17. Yeah. It, was, it was a workout to carry around the laptop yeah, once the power sure. was give or take after. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Please, yeah. yeah. So one of the negatives of my Zen book is the laptop case. It's so small it looks like I have a purse. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could carry around one of those little yeah. petite little bags. Yep. 13.3 inch screen. So yeah, we had yeah. to redo all the plumbing underneath our floor, so I decided that I can't really afford a laptop just here. <laughs> That's what credit cards are for, man. Yeah, <laughs> right. Especially somebody else's mm -hmm. yeah. that you found on the internet for $9. Awesome. Well, a little more yeah. error. Do you have any numbers? <laughs> uh, we could probably make that happen. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how long they were good for. Yeah, no, hey, just, you only need it for a couple minutes. Right? Right? <laughs> just long enough to throw it in the bottom. Alrighty, you want to start? Cool. Okay, so um, first I'm going to talk and I'm going to be giving a basic intro to why you even would care about schema or generators uh, in Clojure. Uh, and then uh, BJ is going to talk after me, uh, mostly about scientific testing, right? Well, great? some something very generator focused as well. Well, so it's a two topic thing. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> or something, whatever you want to talk. About. Or whatever he wants to talk about. Yeah. yeah. I will be talking about stuff I've found useful in learning to do generative testing. Cool. <laughs> so, so yeah, there we can watch more cat videos. That's also cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so, and there we go. Uh, so first off, you're at Climate Corporation. We have yeah. cool offices, which you can't go to because of chairs. Right. <laughs> it's a very good it's security. It's very security. Yeah. Very yeah. security, yeah. 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 Uh, but we actually do closure here. Uh, and that's pretty much all the code I write. I've touched, I've, I've looked at some Python. I think I actually maybe did a commit, but yeah. <laughs> well, pretty much it's all closure. And there's some R, but you only have to touch that if you don't like computers because you're a scientist. Um, so actually, if you I was want, pretty impressed by R. I mean, you can, R is actually pretty cool. I mean, it, it is. It's one of those things where it like it's really good until you want to try and maintain whatever you made. Yeah, I think. yeah. it's kind of like Excel spreadsheets. It's like, oh, that's it's really cool that you can do that. Thing, and then, yeah, okay. uh, that's exactly that's how I describe it. Is it's yeah. great for prototyping. Isn't that how most yeah. people describe so. Lisp? Well, the Lisp is actually good. <laughs> <laughs> well, so there's lots of research code done in Lisp. And research code is by its very nature awful. research yeah. code, awful, horrible code. Yeah. Like my thesis code, horrible, horrible code. But <laughs> hey, you know, whatever. Thesis, right? my thesis. It so made you a bunch of big money. So. Yeah, and later real money. So hey. <laughs> yeah. So if you want to do closure, you should maybe throw me or BJ or whoever a resume, and we'll, uh, hopefully it'll work out for everybody. Okay. Um, so. First off, I'll say why we really don't need to learn schema or generators, because TDD is sufficient. It always works. We never have bugs get through, right? Right? right. Isn't that right? 100%. Yeah, that's oh, yeah, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not how it happens. TDD sucks. TDD is great. Like, I, I find that I write a very basic set of tests that like are basic functionality, but like all the weird shit, it's like, oh, I found that in production. I'm going to fix it. And then the day or two after, I write the test to prove that it doesn't happen anymore. And yay. <laughs> <laughs> that, that helped a lot. <laughs> you know. So what we actually need is you know, our, our user base is like a bunch of little chaos monkeys, basically. They're just doing random junk. And so we need something to do that. And we, need, we have assumptions about what the boundaries are of our inputs and outputs. And we have assumptions about what the you know it's basically we have the boundaries established and we have assumptions about what the inputs and outputs are and if we can make those asser assertions and have them kind of mirrored up to each other we can find where those as our assumptions don't match up with each other which is really most of the problems is we have assumptions that are incorrect so first off the schema the schemata they're like um, if you do paint my numbers they're the lines right it's basically this function should not go outside of these boundaries ever. This 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 input should not change. It should this should always be an integer. If it's a string, it's wrong. If it's a float, it's wrong. If it, maybe it should be a positive integer. If it's a negative twenty, that's wrong. 
So it's setting up the lines. Um, generators are little chaos monkeys <laughs> just randomly putting crap on the on paint, um, which is something we have easy access to. They're called users, but we usually want it before the users. So, so yeah, we want simulated users who just do random junk all the time and just put stupid things like, you know, please enter your age, cat. Minus five. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're wrong. You're not, your age is not cat. So uh, basically, I was actually, about that. also, I don't know if you've seen Uncle Bob's rant on this, but he has a thing where he's filling out the healthcare.gov form, right? He's trying to sign up. He gets the thing that says, enter an important date. <laughs> and so he's like, all right, well, I'll put down my birthday. So he puts in whatever it is, nine, whatever, whatever, fails the <laughs> foundation. And he's like, well, okay, maybe it can't take the slash. So he tries about 10 things to format the date straight, you know, playing around. Oh, maybe it's a two year date, four year date, whatever. Finally, he realizes, oh, they just want it to be like an event. My wedding, he writes in there. Boom. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's all. There There's probably like 20 answers that yeah. you <laughs> actually use. So, so speaking of chaos monkeys, we have this new power user. I'm going to use his wedding. I'm not going to say my wedding. His wedding. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. yeah. We have a new power user at work, though, that just started. And he actually goes through and does crap that's going to give us headaches later. Like, he puts in fake people because he wants to see what he can put in. So he'll like put in a birthday that's like in 198 is one he did. <laughs> that's cool. Which we don't really care normally because people aren't going to be stupid about that. So we just let them put whatever you really want. Yeah. But no, so now we have a participant, you know, a person in there with a birthday in the year 198 that's not real because he decided he wanted to test our code himself. Those type, those types yeah. of things do. You realize some interesting things about the. So you should have asserted that you're probably yeah. born after 1900. If you yeah. work in the insurance industry, that date actually then calculates pre causes you to calculate pre That's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a performance problem there. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it does some curve fit and it ends up extrapolating like way off. With actually, that. that might be a problem now that you did that. Yeah. So basically, we <laughs> want to find this before it's actually in production, this very situation. That's awesome. Yes, that, that's your own coloring, right? Uh, I wish I wish I was this much of an artist. <laughs> I stole this from the internet somewhere. Um, yeah, so generators, right? So nice, here's, nice. A, here's an awesome joke that I stole from uh, somebody that I don't know, but uh, that Val knows, and apparently Mario also knows. So that's kind of cool. It's Don Branson. Whoever you are, thank you for the joke. I'm stealing it. So a generator walked into a bar. Oh, and I also rewarded it. It orders a beer. It orders zero beers. It orders 9,999,999 beers. It orders negative one beers. It orders a lizard. It orders a $5 bill and tries to pay with a beer. It orders <laughs> It orders a Yeah. yeah. So, In the corner. Yes. Yeah. So that this is basically this is basically what you want generators to do. And unfortunately, that's what they do. Uh so if you want schema and generators, you basically want, at minimum, these two lines added to your dependencies. Is my schema is now 1.0. Really? Yeah, and they actually like as of when generators for schemas. So they kind of integrated the ideas of schema gen. OK. So, um, so you can write a schema and they'll write generators. Right, right. Yeah. but I, I, I don't think that's as useful, because the whole point is, is that I want, I want to be like, I want the conflicting assumptions in my brain. Happening. Whereas so if I've got a schema and I've got a generator, it's yeah. going to match. Yeah. It's obviously mm -hmm. going to match. Uh, well, sometimes it's easier to write a schema than it is to write the generators. Yeah, or vice so, versa. So or sometimes can, vice versa. So, yeah. so you don't necessarily have to generate based on the schema that your function accepts. You can ge generate based on any schema you write. So, you know what I mean? Okay. So. Uh, I, yeah. But anyway. anyway. Yeah. 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 Your 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 slide is old. So well, yeah. I, I have not used, I have not actually used that. I just read the. Uh, I, I just read the readme. I haven't used the new features, but I have started. As of what, when would when did this come out? Uh, At least a couple weeks. Yeah. Maybe. Oh, wow. Maybe a month. It is ancient. That's ancient. I know, right? right? Uh, okay. Yeah. But yeah. So. Hey, but, world, uh, but I really. but I do disagree with just having like, because I think one of the most important tests. Of doing this is you have the whole like I'm generating all these things 
and then passing them through my schema, did they all work? Mesh. And that, and if you have it just coming off of your schema, then it's going to just not obviously work. And, 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 uh, so it's sort of like you have two sets of assumptions, and they don't quite mesh you know, sometimes. So schema, they're like types. So if you're in a type language, except for you're not in a type language, so you don't hate yourself, which is great. Um, but so say so say the basic format that you're going to be doing is is you're going to validate some schema for something. So if we have a number like say 42, we want to make sure it's a number. So we can say s validate s num 42, and that will work. In the same of strings and the same of keywords. And there's a bunch of existing ones already there for all the basic stuff, of course. And you'll want to create your own for whatever you're doing. Uh, generators are kind of the reverse, but they're also pretty easy to use. So if you want uh, integers, if your thing's taking in integers, you can get a sample of integers. And here you go. You just do gen sample gen int in this case. And I've got 10 random integers, including 0 and negative 1. Uh, because that's the sort of things that you always forget. You always forget that negative numbers are a thing. You always forget zeros. Um, random question, because I was uh -huh. uh, working with Jessica on some property-based testing. Um, but does this do the thing with that Scala's quick check does, where it actually heavily weights its randomness towards things like zero and negative one? It spirals out, kind of. Yeah, I yeah. think it's based off of yeah. test checks. It's increasing in it's complexity, which like you can it. see there. So yeah, it starts with zero, zero one, it's, one. It's zero, like a, uh, and yeah. as you get further out, the it's supposed to bigger. spiral out. It's a yeah. yeah. I can't remember what you call that. Uh, Rose tree? That might yeah, that might yeah. be right. But the I increasing mean, complexity, it you know, it's with all the different data types. So if you have a vector generator, yeah, it's going to start off with an empty vector, have you know, vectors yeah. of one or two elements, and by like the hundredth iteration, it's going to have. Yeah, at least, at least in vectors. Scala, though, it, it's not just increasing complexity. It's actually they specifically weighted it towards values that commonly trip up programmers, like max int and yeah. min int. I don't think this like one definitely does not uh, go for max int or uh, negative infinity, positive infinity, um, because, well, you can see it there. Right, yeah, yeah and it starts it. small and the number is just. And it spirals out there. Yeah. 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 Uh, which might be a thing with. Should be a pull request by somebody. Maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. You definitely should have negative and positive yeah, negative infinity, infinity and positive infinity or yeah. and minimum max. And then I guess I guess enclosure it's not as big of a deal, but if you have any job interrupt going on, then it's max it could be a problem. Yeah. 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 Um by so by default your sample size is 10. You can right. change that by just saying I want 20 or whatever. So here we have 20 numbers. You see it also starting out at zero for reference to that. Um so that's really nice. So that's your little just random input. Um, so when you're with your schema, there's basically two big functions you're going to be using. You're either going to you're going to either validate or you're going to check. And the basic breakdown is, is they're the same except for validate throws an error. And so if you want to do a try catch type thing, you're wanting validate. If you're playing just on the console, you probably well, on the REPL, you probably want to do check. Uh, if you're going to if you're expecting it to be bad, you probably want to do check and then do something with the output, like make it a string or something. So it just sort of depends which way you want it, whether you want an erased exception or you want um, a description. The descriptions are really nice, as you, as you can see here. So the uh, description's yeah. a sequence, though? It looks like, like it's code? It's, it's, it's not evaluatable code, but it's, it's readable. Sorry. Like It's like a tree down <clears throat> saying what's wrong. So like here, um, nope should be an so this is a really simple one, right? Nope should be an integer and it's not, um, yeah. but it will actually be like this third key of whatever should be a positive float and it's not. If you if you build your uh, schema correctly, it can actually give a very quick, concise description of exactly what's wrong where. The descriptions are really really useful when you're like. Validating on a predicate, yeah, because you know it's just looking at it like you're validating on some function. So the the error you get from schema when you are validating on a function is next to useless. It's yeah. There's there's places where it stops the tree, which is irritating. Yeah, predicates are one of those places. Um, I think both 
Also, it pretty much stops the tree right there. It just says both, it's not both and either. Yeah, either. Yeah, and there's ways to work around that. Um, but yeah, if in normal cases you get some really nice little descriptions of exactly what's wrong with your data. Um, so, so back to generators from the schema. Uh, you can use these generators to uh, check the properties. So if we go back to yeah, so we see we have generators and we also have properties and we have test check, right? Uh, so for example, we want to say for all of these uh, natural numbers, A plus B is going to be greater than or equal to A, right? So we generate a bunch of A's, which are naturals, and then a bunch of G B's that are naturals. Uh, oops, went too far. There you go. Int, okay. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, went, I, went, I fast forwarded one slide too far when I went back. Okay. You know, so we're like, yeah, okay, surely that holds, right? Well, let's do 100 tests just to make sure. Well, guess what? It's not true. And the main problem is because, well, num negative numbers. Uh, and you see, we only got three in on the test before I figured this out. And we failed in, in this particular random case, one and negative two. This doesn't hold for. Uh, the shrink is really cool. It will reduce it down to the simplest possible example usually of the, what the problem is, in which case, in this case, it's zero and negative one is the simplest possible thing that it can shrink to. That fails. And then you're like, oh yeah, negative numbers. And then you, you, then you face palm and then you realize you mean natural numbers. Uh, and this actually holds for natural numbers. And uh, another cool thing is, so you've got the seed value and with that seed value, you can actually replay, you can, it's basically the seed to the random number generator. So you, you can, it is, it, yeah. even though it's random, it is repeatable because you've got the seed. But it also gives you a shrunken test case to where you don't really need the. Right. So where really technically, work. you could just have a unique right. single test case. Yeah, so you can yeah. rewrite it as a unit test. Yeah, make if, it you really, if you really need to, yeah. yeah. Although, yeah. Yeah, well, I guess, yeah, if you, so that would be, it. yeah, so if yeah. you actually found a thing in production, yeah. you probably wouldn't want to make a unit but test that, of that. That's my general pattern is like when it does find something. I'll take that smallest test case, turn it into a unit test, and then, um, and that's then I'll debug and figure out why the hell is this this test case failing. That's and then sometimes, you know, if it's trivial, it ends up being trivial enough. I'll delete that test case once I'm done, since it's obviously covered by the. Well, it's sometimes covered. It's random, so. Well. <laughs> well, right. I guess yes. Good point. Yeah. <laughs> if so, if it was something like negative numbers that you forgot. Or yeah. 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 So, so now we can fix it. We meant that, um, yeah. and we can replay it with the seed. So I'm curious with the history of the natural number thing because I don't know it. Oh, uh, what is a natural number is just a definition, and there's a bit of a disagreement in the math mathematics community of whether zero is or is not natural number. Like, well, so basically, is natural numbers one, two, three, four, five, and so on, or is it zero, one, two, three, four, five, and so on, or should we give that a different name? You know. And, yeah, there and obviously you're on the side of zero being an actual number. And so is, uh, more importantly, so is test check. So. Yeah, test check. <laughs> oh, right, right. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, so, so what I was talking about with the whole, like, uh, the whole uh, whether you should have auto-generating schema or auto-generating auto generators for your schema. If you generate generators from your schema, that's kind of a weird one to say. Uh, here's, I, I think this test is actually useful, well, obviously not in this case, but like for a bigger example, this is actually a useful little thing, right? Is you basically have your generator generate a bunch of things, and then you run it through your schema, and does anything go angry at you? Um, and so here's how you'd actually do it. So we've got this basic uh, schema for a person. All that there is is a name and an age, names and integer here because SNAP's not a thing, but we can make that later, uh, which I actually don't do. I cut out that slide, but it's pretty easy. Um, and the name is a string. And the generator actually does generate the age as natural numbers only uh, because being negative five is silly unless you're the doctor. Um, and your name is a string, right? So we can do that for all property and say, let's give me a person, and it should validate. And in this case, it actually will. You can run 100, 1,000, a million, and eventually it'll say, yep, all good. 
Um, if you're wanting to actually write these tests, you probably actually want to wrap them in a def spec, though. Uh, def spec kind of looks like def test, but is a little bit shaped differently. The only real noticeable difference is you've got the number of iterations as well. And I think you can default that somehow. Um, um, test.chuck. Yeah. yeah, test chuck allows you to like to like wrap the number of iterations in uh, there's it's a macro and you know, allows you to set some global yeah. variable basically. Environment variable. Yeah. Yeah, Environment yeah variable. I, I remembered I haven't written that number in a while. Yeah. So but I couldn't remember how I was the doing. Number it. Of test cases for, you know, whatever you want, so. Yeah. yeah, so you in uh, so you have like your def spec, your spec name, and then you just do that property for all check. And there's a bunch of other property checks you can do other than for all. Um, and so in, in this particular example, we're generating a bunch of non-empty vectors of integers, and we're saying that if you sort them, the minimum is going to be the first of the sorted version, which Makes sense. Assuming your sort function is working, which is if you were to write this test, what you're probably actually testing is the sort function or the minimum function. Um, as you probably already noticed, everything's got two names and they're all slightly different, and that's bad. And sometimes things are missing on one side or not on the other. So that's where like having the schema uh, would be nice, and having the generators. That might, but the thing is, is there, there's a lot more schema missing things than generator missing things, is, in my experience. So, yeah. Uh, some of these things that are marked missing, you can get in other libraries, um, mm -hmm. and that's always a good thing. But libraries, open source libraries, yeah, they're all they're out there, and they're all not that difficult to make. But it's just there is holes. Um, yeah. So lots of missing things. Uh, here, so here we're going to do a couple example generations. So here we have booleans. Uh, that's something you might use a lot, just trues and falses. And so I gen sample gen boolean. I'm just getting a whole lot of trues and falses, just as you'd expect. Uh, mm -hmm. Bytes. Uh, important thing to remember: bytes are assigned. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that's something that uh, might throw you for a loop if you forget it. Uh, byte arrays, if you want a byte array. I'm not actually listing them all because they're all like just random memory addresses or whatever in the world that is. Um, so that's not that impressive to read, but yeah, you'll get a bunch of those. If you don't want a single byte, you want a byte array, you can do that. Uh, if you want numbers, there's a lot of generators for them. Integers, choose is great because if you want something in a range, so say I want something between 18 and 45, i.e. the target demographic of pretty much every advertiser in the universe, so you can do that. Uh, if I remember right, that's inclusive on both ends. So 18, Looks like it. So oh, yeah, 18, 18 is there, and I think 45. I think 45 will show up eventually too, yeah. but I can't remember if it was inclusive on both sides or just the bottom. Uh, natural numbers, positive and negative integers, strictly positive integers. In so other words, excluding zero, you can do those. And there's others. There's no about the strictly ones. Yeah, because sometimes people don't want zero. Right. Um, Characters and strings are the same way. You've got lots of options, okay. and even more options in other libraries. Uh, characters. Characters include all Unicode, and typically that is actually what you want, whether you uh, want to admit it or not, because if it's a user input, somebody it's will somewhere put somewhere. Um, in this yeah, somebody will put like some Japanese characters or something in it. Uh, same with string. String is actually Unicode. You can ex you can specify ASCII or alphanumeric or alpha. So if you actually know that it should be restricted, you can make your generator match that way. Um, tuples. You won't use these that much because typically, or at least I don't use these that much because I rarely have tuples if I'm in closure. Typically, if I'm doing this, I really want a hash map. Yeah. But if you do have a, a legitimate tuple, you can generate them this way. Uh, so in this case, it's always a tuple of uh, first an integer and then an ASCII string. And so we've got 10 of those vectors that are of that format. What's more likely if you're generating a vector, you want something like this. I want some amount of integers in a vector. And there's a bunch of those. So you rarely will really use tuple, or at least you shouldn't be using tuple much. 
you probably will use gen vector a lot. Um, Shuffle's pretty cool. I don't think I've ever used it, <laughs> but I want to. <laughs> um, and uh, I should have probably put another variable in there because I just that there's going to be a lot of repeats because that's only going to be six anyway. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah. So if I made this one, two, three, four, we'd see some more interesting things. But yeah. Uh, so we've actually got probably all permutations there, unless we're just lucky or unlucky. If you uh, Gen map is generally not the one you want. There's a hash map, but uh, gen map's weird. So you're generating keys some way, and you're generating values some way. Okay. So in this case, I'm gen elements, which I haven't shown you. I'll talk about gen elements. So it's basically pulling. It could be any one of those things. And so basically, your keys either going to be bibbity, bobbity, or boo, and all your values are integers for your hash maps. What you probably actually are gen map. What you probably actually want is gen hash map, uh, and this is like your typical run of the mill closure input output is going to be a hash map of some specified keys that have some specified types of values. Like so, for example, here, uh, bibbity is always an integer of some sort. Bobbity is always an ASCII string, and boo is always exactly 4077. And that's what gen return does. It gen return gives you exactly the value that you have it there. So that might be like a version string or something that's always the same thing. And yep, yeah, so that's how you do that. Uh, elements, I think, I think that's what we used here. Yeah. Uh, so a better example of that, right? So for example, a deck of cards, if you had the different suits of cards, if you wanted to pull without exhaustion from that collection hey, randomly. You can do that very easily with gen elements. That would be a good case for a couple. You have a number in that, or you know, a number or a... Oh, uh, so like nine, nine of hearts? Yeah. yeah, to simulate uh, a whole deck, you know, an actual deck. Yeah. yeah, but even then I probably would just naturally use a hash map. I'd be like, yeah, yeah I don't maybe. know. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. I don't know what I would do. It's <laughs> kind of... It's kinda, I, for like two or well, three things, actually, a tuple yeah. is fine, but if you have more than like yeah. two or three things, a tuple is a really pain in the butt. Yeah. For like just nine of clubs, yeah, that'd be great. Honestly, for but it's really just two is the problem. Um, and you can always resort to fmap. If whatever you have doesn't exist, you can make it. You can make it because you can just be like, it's a function. Here you go. Yeah. Uh, and the functions in fmap, you're typically going to be inputting to the function of the existing generator. Like, so for example, if we wanted only even positive things, we can take all positive integers, so it's already positive, and then multiply by two. And therefore, since it's multiplied by two, it's therefore divisible by two always. So you're going to get, so here's 20 of them, and you see they're all even and positive. Um, Here's a really dirty, ugly way to do uh, doubles <laughs> that uh, utilizes the fact that the built-in yeah, RAND function. Sort of yeah. yeah. Um, but this actually isn't horrible, but it works. It, it's really short, but it's just kind of seems That's wrong. That's actually probably better than the way I normally do. I normally use the ratio generator and then fmap double, you know, so I cast my ratio to a double. But that's probably better. There, there's I can't remember. There's some issues with this too, but I can't remember what it was. And I'm actually trying to make I something happen. The output from the output from the failed test would give you the generated integer value. Oh right. Yeah. Instead of, is it, would that be true? Um. Rather than the output of the F map. Good question. Set the test. You also yeah. wouldn't have a seed to your RAND output here. It's well, the seed would still be applicable yeah. because the no, gen, it's all the same range. yeah, right. gen, it's right. basically the start for the whole run okay. is the seed. Yeah. Um, yeah. So with the with the ratio, you're going to have a bias towards things that are yeah ratio ish. Yeah. Uh, I think there's some I can't remember anymore. It's been like a month or two since I actually looked at this, but I think there was some innate bias to this approach too. Okay. Uh, but I don't remember what it was. 
Um, but it's a good example of what you can do with it. it's a, any function, right? Sometimes you need bind. Uh, so basically, if you want a binding, you use bind. So it's basically if you would like a let block in your generators. And this is one of the things that I was like grappling with for like several weeks when I first started using generators until eventually I figured out that this thing existed. Um, and I was like, oh, why didn't they just like name it something like let, but they didn't. Well, <laughs> I'll give a much simpler way of doing this in mind. Oh, cool. <laughs> okay. I, uh, I, I've I, never used bind or uh, fmap anymore. Oh, really? Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, so in bind, so for example, like we have key and string coming off of the same thing. Uh, we're obviously going to need to share that uh, that information, and we can do that by just binding uh, uh, a non -empty. so we're bind a non empty string, and then we uh, we have it as input there, and so we can generate like so you can see key is the key version of two, and then string is the string version of two, and then string of two, and so forth. And so you can do that kind of stuff. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, not empty, sometimes you really don't want not empty. Sometimes it's really a pain in the butt. And you can just, so you can use, that on the outside. yeah, you just, uh, you just wrap it in and it'll yeah. filter them out. It acts sort of like a filter, I guess. Uh, there's lots of other ones that you can modify it with, like uh, such that. Okay, so uh, I'll so see you do a filter. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I could have done that even as a as a such that instead of doing that multiply in the fmap, and that probably be considered more proper probably. Um, well, such that you have to be kind of careful with, because it's going to generate all of the values that don't match that, and then it's going to filter out the ones that. It Oh yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, it's going to return the ones that do match your predicate. So okay, so yeah, if so you have a very very restrictive predicate there, it's you know, going to be very computationally. Times, it's going to it's going to end up there. It'll be computationally intensive. Yeah. Okay, so so I depending on what you might actually prefer that map then. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sized sized to three size. I'm trying to remember what that meant. Yeah, I'm trying to remember now off the top of my head. Um, um, I can't remember how to explain size. I, be I believe it increases or decreases the rate that the right. numbers increase. Uh, I, yeah, I don't, I don't uh, remember. I may be wrong. It's not something you'll use much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so other things you can do if you're making new generators. Uh, we already saw gen return. It's great. Uh, you actually use it more than you think. Which is mm -hmm. probably yeah. One of them is really nice because often you'll like want either this or that, uh, and that's how you end up doing that. So, for example, if I want to either integers or ASCII strings, I can gen one up there, and I've got a sample that's alternating between them at random. Uh, sometimes I want to wait that, like say I want a lot more integers than strings, so you can do that with frequency, and so. The frequencies I'm set here are seven and three, so it's basically 70% chance of being an integer and a 30% chance of being strings. And you can put as many things into that as you want. Um, so in conclusion, uh, you should use schema and generators. <laughs> It'll make your life better. Yeah. Any so. questions? Did you look at my slides for the first use? I did not. Okay, because you're. Because <laughs> that. Cover a but no, no, that like the second half, you know, where you're actually going over generators. I didn't, I didn't know you put like the. Even starting out by uh, saying bad things about TDD. <laughs> well, so in, in fairness, I think TDD is a good thing. Yeah. Uh, but it doesn't really. It's always catch. a great design thing, yeah. right? I yeah. Think. It's out, it's, it's really good for like it's not going to cover your range of values. It's really good for making sure you're implementing base functionality. It's yeah. really bad for catching bugs. Yeah. 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 It's like I finished that story. Check. Yeah. Oh so, crap! I've got bugs. Oh, it's cool that we independently came to like the same conclusion about <laughs> the benefits of generative. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, I need to hit the passing. So let me back in a little bit. Uh yeah, just bang loudly. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. You,
Yeah, yeah, go out that door. Back to the chairs! No! 